Hello everyone and welcome back to my little home workshop. You may have noticed in last week's video that I couldn't run my milling machine in reverse. So today I've come out to the workshop to install a rotary switch which will enable me to have forward and obviously reverse control over my milling machine. Keep in mind that I still need to have the original buttons on the machine working for the vertical and horizontal spindle. But the first thing we need to do here is to uh, remove it from the switch, open up our electronic cabinet and take a look inside. Now when I got the door open I was a little bit surprised that some swarf had made its way into the enclosure and you can see it sitting on there so that required me to clean it. I'm going to use some aluminium angle to mount the switch onto my machine. Now the aluminium angle is roughly 125 by 50 and it's off into my bandsaw and we'll just chop that little bit off of the off cut that I had and you can see it just fits in in the throat of that bandsaw. Now cutting angle like this is always uh, a little bit difficult. You'll see here that I've inserted a socket in the vise which helped clamp up on that top edge. Now I did have a little bit of overhang but it I was satisfied with the overall result. Over to my linisher now and just take off that excess material and uh, try and do those fillets around the corners. Now the belt is a little bit abrasive, it'd be nicer with a finer belt, but it is what it is. You see here I'll just do those fillets on the side, a little bit of deburring now, take off those sharp corners. And the uh, linisher certainly makes short work of, uh, of that. And there's the finished product. I've decided to install it on top of the enclosure. And that will require me to drill down through. I've dropped into the drill press here to drill this PVC housing and uh, I'm using a 5mm drill bit to drill through there. Now there's four holes and I'll ensure to bolt it up with uh, four of those bolts. I want to ensure that the switch is firmly attached to the machine. Now that I've finished drilling those, I'll drill the aluminium bracket. Now you can see I've marked out the positions for the holes. So I transferred those holes onto the aluminium bracket, gave them a little center punch and uh, wear away. And uh, as I'm mounting this with five mil bolts, I'm gonna drill this one at five and a half, just to give myself a little bit of play to ensure they all go in there satisfactorily. Coming up on the last hole now. Over to the machine. Now you can see I've already drilled and tapped one hole, which is the hole here closest to you. Um, I'm drilling the back hole here now. And you can see that unfortunately I had to drill on an angle. And uh, I had my gear change levers in the road. Um, this won't affect it, it's not done it's not done properly to my liking but it is what it is now this is a great little um, tap holder here that I've got and my good friend Robert Brown uh, sent that to me as a gift and it's a ratchet type so that came in really handy, handy here in this location and allowed me to do this today okay so I've mounted the bracket on you can see there with two bolts with uh, washers and spring washers 
it's onto the PVC housing now and it's really hard to get my hand in the back there and I did drop the washers a few times now I'm only going to show you bolting up this with two bolts but uh, I can assure you four bolts went into it um, I just wasn't going to keep the camera running uh, you've seen one bolt go in, you've seen them all I'm onto the bottom one now I've got the flat washer and spring washer on, I'm just putting the nut on now now I didn't fully tighten this because I had to install the top left and bottom right bolts so I just nip them up firmly with my fingers so it's over to the wiring now to wire this rotary switch it was uh, a little bit confusing and I have to uh, say thank you to a gentleman on the internet that had it on his channel and I watched his channel unfortunately it was all in uh, uh, I believe Hindi or the gentleman's Indian I think I'm assuming and uh, however I was managed to understand where it was going because uh, sadly I didn't get a schematic for this and when I tried to look it up I couldn't find one on the internet but I could have been searching with the wrong terms so I've stripped those wires now the wires I'm currently doing are the actual wires uh, to the plug however I'll be attaching the output wires first then the input wires then the jump wires and the switch and I'll show you up this up here a little bit further on now these are old uh, crimping pliers I've had them for probably since I started my apprenticeship so probably 40 years old and uh, they're actually like vice grips and they lock in like a pit bull on a grabbing a bone so making sure I'm ensuring that to twist those wires properly uh, fit on the spade terminal here and crimp it and uh, these pliers really put lots of pressure on it and crimp that wire in good because I don't want it coming loose as you know if you've got loose wires inside those crimp terminals you can cause resistance resistance causes excess current draw which again causes heat and can start to uh, let the magic smoke out of the box now it might be a little hard to see there on camera but the wires that I've got going to the control box uh, on this rotary switch going to 3, 7 and 11 and now the incoming, so that's the output. Now the input wires come in here. This is from the three phase switch here. And they're sitting on, it's hard to see, two, six, and 10. Now they've got a jump wire that jump and cross over. So you'll see here at my line one, which is brown, drops over into position number eight and then line two which is blue here jumps into into position number four on the top of the rotary switch so the earth here I've just joined it here so let's put it back together and hopefully I've got some uh, action now before I close this lid on the box here um, you might have saw when I was drilling I couldn't drill perpendicularly I had to come in on an angle because I was hitting the knobs I didn't feel like taking them off um, I had some paper in here, a little booklet, and I had a bit of timber in case I broke through and went into the uh, electrics here. Uh, before I closed this box, I turned on the air compressor and gave that a really good blowout so there's no chips or swarf in there. We can shut that box now. I've uh, put the front back on. just tighten these up it's got a nice thick rubber gasket here so hopefully um, that should keep any swarf out um, this is my forward and reverse switch here now a moment of truth I need to plug this in and uh, turn on the three phase rotary phase converter and uh, Hopefully I don't set fire to the workshop. Now before I plug this in, I did check it with my um, digital multimeter just to check continuity and make sure it was switching. Plug is back in, I'll leave the switch turned off. Righto, so let's turn the power back on here. 
the switch to the machine is now on I'll turn it in the forward motion and you gotta love it when a plan comes together so there's my spindle in forward direction I'll now flick the switch to the reverse and the vertical spindle is running in reverse I'll flick my main switch now to neutral and the vertical spindle stops onto the horizontal spindle now you'll hear me reset the e-stop and press the start button and we have forward rotation I flick the switch into neutral reset it back into reverse and away we go so we have reverse we now have dual directions and there it is all finished all neat and tidy and uh, very happy with the job and the outcome and this should expand my opportunities in my workshop I want to say thank you very much for following along today I know it wasn't uh, a machining video but it was a job that had to get done nonetheless uh, thank you again and welcome and uh, thank you to my existing subscribers and I'd like to welcome my new subscribers that have joined me recently. So thank you very much. Have a lovely day ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.